Photoshop has some really amazing tonal correction tools, and what makes it even more amazing is that you can apply all of these tools through the adjustments layers at the bottom of the layers panel. So we'll walk through several of them right now. You have to have your background layer selected, or whatever layer it is that you want to modify, before you make your adjustments. Then you'll click on the cookie button at the bottom of the screen, and we're going to start at the top by adjusting the levels. Now the levels, when you open up this dialog box, it has what's called a histogram. And the histogram is a mountain range that represents the values from dark to light within your selected image or whatever layer it's modifying. Like with a fill adjustment layer, these tonal correction adjustment layers also have a mask that will apply the adjustment to the entire document or if you modify the mask to just a selected area. You can use the sliders on the histogram to increase or decrease the midpoint marker, increase or decrease the darks and the lights over on this side. You could also click the auto button. So sometimes uh, clicking the auto button will sort of recalibrate the histogram for you. And you may not see any changes at all, but you can use these buttons here at the bottom. If you wanted to see what it was before you made a change, just click it before and after, and it just shows you what's happening before and after, like a little quick preview toggle. One thing that I like to do with the levels is use these eyedroppers. You can click on the white point and then choose an area that has the whitest white in your document and click on it. And that may not be the whitest white. And then you'll do the same thing for the black point. So you'd have to find something in your document that would represent the black is black. So I might try to get somewhere in here. And then based on wherever you click, that will change the whole temperature of your image and the way that the whole image is sort of calibrated. Depending on where you click, like I say, it can really change how the image looks. So maybe there's a black up in here somewhere, or I would try to go back in this dark area. Might take a little finessing. Or you could just go back and click that auto button again, and it'll put you where you were before. And then you can adjust these midpoint black and white markers to your satisfaction. You can go in and adjust the individual channels, the red, green, and blue channels, if you didn't want to do them all at once, just by selecting those and then adjusting the histogram for each. When you have everything the way you like it, it's just right there on top of your original layer, not permanently modifying it, but only slightly adjusting it, like putting tinted glasses on. The cool thing about this is that you can double click at any time to reopen this levels adjustment dialog box, make your changes, and those changes will save unless or until you change them another time. If you wanted to modify the mask with your paintbrush tool, painting in black and white, just click here to select the mask and paint your adjustments. Select our background layer and show you another one of the options. We'll do curves. Curves are almost identical to levels in that they also include a histogram. But curves tend to give you even more flexibility because you can have multiple midpoint markers to create a more curvy curve. Instead of just an arc that goes up and over, you can create an S curve, a wobbly, wobbly, wavy curve. You can do whatever you like. So like with levels, you have your black point and your white point, which you can adjust along this scale or even along this edge here. So I might darken it by moving it into the right a little bit. And I usually try to use the histogram as a guide for where those markers should go. Like I think right now the whites are pretty bright. I don't even think they need to be lightened up at all. So I would leave it like that. Now as far as the midpoint markers go, you can add markers as often as you like by clicking right on that line. You can then click and drag to adjust the tonality of that midpoint marker up and down or even left and right to change how the tonality is falling across your image. If you wanted to add another marker, just click anywhere, and then you can drag up or down in any direction until you get it the way you like it. Now this is really making this object pop and separate even further from the background image. When you have everything the way you like it, just go back to your layers panel. You can toggle off and on to see what you had before and after. Let's toggle that one off and we'll do another one with your cookie button. This time, let's do color balance, which is down here. With the color balance, you can adjust the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights individually. So we'll start with the midtones. And this would just be adjusting the temperature from cyan to red or red to cyan. If you went cyan, this is almost like a cross-processing Lomographic technique to really shift 
the color in one direction unnaturally, but that could be something that you really enjoy going for. You know, usually yellow cyan makes it seem more Lomo or super red, but you can play around with these individually. So let's do the highlights now. We'll adjust the highlights. I'm just playing around with these, not doing anything in particular. And now let's do the shadows. When you're finished, again, just go back to your layers panel. And if you decide you want to make a change at any point, you can always come back in here and make your modifications. We'll hide that and we'll show you another one. How about let's do brightness and contrast. This is a really simple adjustment layer in that there's only two options here. You can click auto to have it do what it thinks it should do based on your image. I personally love a high contrast image, so bumping it up really high really makes the colors pop. But you could also increase or decrease the brightness if you like. And I'd probably leave it back where it was. Let's try another one. This time let's do black and white. With black and white, it adjusts your images to black and white, but you can use the colors inside to adjust the hue and saturation. So I might really want to make the red much darker. Or maybe make the blue darker, but the red not quite the same tonality. You could even tint your image by clicking the tint option and then choosing a tint color. If you wanted to do something like a daguerreotype or Van Dyke brown or even a cyanotype blue, you just have to find the right blue to tint with, and that can be toggled on and off. Let's try another one. Let's do a hue saturation. Now the hue saturation has a full rainbow slider, so you can adjust the entire tint of your whole image just by adjusting the hue slider. Wouldn't it be nice if our flag was that color? <laughs> I like that. Okay, then you can also increase or decrease the saturation and increase or decrease the lightness, the overall image. You could also colorize based on a particular tint. And what's more, you can even go in and adjust just the reds, just the blues, just the greens, yellows, cyans, magentas, etc. Now notice that I've changed the color of the pinwheel but I might not want it to change that background color, which is kind of beigey, khaki. If I wanted to, I could adjust that by modifying my mask. And you can tell your mask is selected when you have those four corners around that mask. Then you can paint with your regular paintbrush tool. I'll just increase the diameter with my keyboard shortcut, the right bracket to increase, left bracket to decrease the size. And now I'm just sort of painting away those areas so I get that background color back. The black areas are revealing through to the original. The white areas are showing me the mask. Of course, I can increase and decrease my brush size and spend a lot of time and really get in there and do a fine cleanup job here, or even go and make a nice selection of my pinwheel and then come back around and do a deletion of some of the space on the mask. And of course, if I wanted to modify the mask again at any time, I could come back in here, make it go back to normal, maybe just bump up the saturation a little bit, like so. And it's still only applying to the masked areas. Let's do one more option called Posterize. And with Posterize, you can specify the number of levels Think of levels like colors. So you can increase the number of colors. So two would be the fewest, but you can increase that to three, four, five, six, as many as you like. I kind of like the five or the four. And what's neat about this too is you can adjust the blending mode. You can adjust the opacity. And you can combine these different effects with your image. So that's kind of neat. And then maybe just bring the opacity down to make your work really stand out and be unique. Now there's another option that I want to show you. It's called Shadows and Highlights. Now this image is of a dog sitting in a car on a hot day. 
But there's so much glare going on that it's hard to see what's going on in the inside, and the glare is actually quite distracting. Now, the purpose of this adjustment, shadow highlight adjustment, is to help salvage images where the subject is either silhouetted due to strong backlighting or to improve an image where the color's been washed out by the key light being too bright. Or in this case, you know, the sun is really glaring on the car, but we want to bring out some of the image behind the glare. Before you can apply this non-destructively, of course, you could apply it destructively, but then you'd lose your original file if you didn't have a backup. So to apply it non-destructively, we first need to convert this layer into what's called a smart object. A smart object makes it so that it can have these adjustment layers effects applied to it without degrading the original. To convert this into a smart object, you will right click on the layer itself and choose convert to smart object. You can tell it's a smart object because smart objects have this little icon in the bottom right corner of their thumbnail. Now you can non-destructively apply the shadows and highlights. To apply it, you'll go to your image adjustment menu and then choose shadows and highlights. This brings up the shadow highlight dialog box and inside the box, you can adjust the shadows and highlights. Now, there's a little option here called Show More Options. By default, it's usually collapsed, but you can show more options, which will give you even more control over what you're adjusting. Now, these first two sections here are shadows and highlights, and they have the same sliders. So if you want to adjust the amount, that just really means the intensity of the adjustment, whereas the tonal width is the values that affect the region around the adjustment. Larger values will include midtones, but if you push it too far, it can create halos. Whereas the radius is sort of like a tolerance setting that looks at neighboring pixels around the areas of change in color to determine which areas should be affected. So that's pretty much the same for shadows and highlights. Now, I've already played around with this image, so I'm going to plug in some values that I think make this look kind of cool just by selecting and typing. So that's for the shadows. And for the highlight amount, I might really want to bring this up, all of these up quite a bit. And this allows me to start getting rid of the glare and see that there's actually another dog in the driver's seat, which I might not have noticed before. Now, the second area at the bottom, or rather the third area, if you don't count these two as one unit, deals with image adjustments to improve your image quality. Color correction here, the top one, will modify the saturation of the adjusted areas. And this lets you counterbalance any washed out areas in your image. The brightness will only appear if you're working on a black and white image. So we're not seeing that here. But if you had a black and white image, you would see brightness come up. And that's working with grayscale images. Now, the midtone contrast, which you see here, affects any missing contrast in the midtone range of an image, and then the negative values will reduce the contrast, positive values will increase the contrast. Black and white clip, these guys right here, will raise the black point of your shadows, but lower the white point of your highlights. So you can increase or decrease the color correction. So if I increase it, we really get like crazy saturation, almost unnatural saturation. So you'd probably want to leave it a little bit lower depending on your image and how it was shot. And as far as the contrast goes, it really depends on your image, how much you determine is too much. Probably leave it somewhere in the 60 range for this one. So if you didn't want your colors to clip, like losing details in the shadow and highlight areas, you would increase or decrease the black or white clip. If you have a tonal correction like this and you wanted to save it and use it again, you can save it as a default or actually save it and then reload it in at any time for batch processing with particular images. And when you have your image ready to go, just click OK. And you'll see what happens similar to working with adjustment layers. You have what's called a smart filter, which is itself a mask, and that can be toggled on and off. Or almost like the effects that you use with the FX button, the styles, you can toggle off the shadow highlight. And you could go in at any time just by double clicking reopen the dialog box, make your changes, and click OK when you're done. And if you wanted to modify the mask so that you're seeing through to the original layer, all you would have to do is select the mask here and then paint with black or white. So I might really miss some of the contrast that was showing up here on this rear view mirror, side view mirror rather. So I might want to paint with my paintbrush on the filter to reveal the underlying image, like so. And you know, you'd spend a little bit of time 
making some fine tuned adjustments so that it looks exactly the way you like it. So that's working with these tonal correction adjustment layers, working with smart filters, smart objects, and the shadow and highlight.